Good morning. Welcome to this time of worship and fellowship and special day today of baby dedication. Um, my name is Bob Zirko. For those of you that don't know me, um, welcome those of you that are here and via the internet. It's a beautiful day here in Plainfield and I'm sure uh, throughout the Midwest as far as I know. Uh, please take a few minutes to complete, complete the communication and prayer request form in your bulletin. Um, these prayers you can um, put in the um, tithing box in the narthex and they'll be lifted up today and throughout our prayer ne network throughout the week. Um, for the uh, information, the personal information, if um, it's not up to date, please fill that out so that we can update our information as well. And if you're visiting, please uh, fill that out as well. We won't hound you or drive by your house or anything. We'll... What else have we done? I mean, not done. Um, so, yeah. Um, you're welcome to make, room, uh, um, make use of our family worship room right around the corner there. Uh, the service is broadcast in there. Some announcements. Um, we have saved the date for June 27th. We're saving that date for Welcome Back to Church. So try and be here for sure. If all of you could be here next Sunday, that would even be great. Uh, we're going to fill out some cards and send them off. So please be here for that. Uh, and then, of course, June 27th. Um, bring a friend. Bring a couple friends. Bring several friends. That would be great. Bible class meets at 9.30 in the morning on Sunday, and at 6.30 on Tuesdays via Zoom. And do we have any other announcements today? None. All right. Is everybody awake? All right, good. I heard laughter, so that means yes. All right, I will turn it over then to Pastor. I'm sure they are. Uh, let's take just a moment and uh, pray together, shall we? Father, I want to thank you for the opportunity today to be a part of such a special, special occasion. Lord, I can't even imagine babies These kids are all supposed to be little, Father. How did they grow up so fast? But our God, we thank you that they are, and we thank you, Lord, that they're bringing this precious baby to the church to be dedicated, christened, whatever the term people may choose is. But God, we today set this child apart in the very name of Jesus Christ. And Father, as we gather here today, we ask that your anointing in this service would be here. Give us the ears to hear and the heart to, to receive and the mind, our God, to understand according to your will and purpose. And our Father, as we pray, we ask you, God, to bless our families. We pray this in Christ's holy name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. Well, <clears throat> if you would, please, today we're going to receive communion. Hopefully you picked up your communion on the way in. Did anybody miss it and not have it? We will get it for you. Did anybody? You, you, Piper, how did you do that? You were getting water. Bring two, Mom. Oh, Bob. Thank you. So everybody is served, not over-served now. If everyone is served, uh, let's do the uh, Salem Covenant, which is right there. We covenant with the Lord and one with another and do bind ourselves in the presence of God to walk together in all his ways according as he is pleased to reveal himself unto us in his blessed word of truth. The communion service is one of memorial. I spoke of memorial last week, and today's service of memorial is the memorial of Christ. 
So hopefully, the service that we had last week about Memorial Day will be today memorable that we are memorial, have a memorial for Christ himself. Let's sing the first verse of our communion hymn, Come Share the Lord. We have elements that are symbols of what Christ himself did for us on Calvary. At the Last Supper, Jesus took the bread and broke it, blessed it and broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. And as often as you do this, remember me. When we come to the Lord's table, we don't come on our own goodness. Or am I glad of that? Because I wouldn't be here. We come because we've been invited, and we come because of the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Nothing else. No other reason can we come to this table. The invitation is given by Christ, and we are worthy to come only because of the blood. So these elements I want to pray for, then we'll go through the ritual. Let's pray. Father, upon the bread and the cup, we ask that your Holy Spirit would bring forth a special anointing today, our God, an anointing not just upon these symbols that we use, but an anointing upon our hearts, our minds, our spirits, our soul. That God, today, we pause to remember. Lord, as the nation celebrates D-Day, we celebrate today. Este, salvation through Jesus Christ. Father, because of brave men and women throughout the years, we're in a free country. And because of the great gift of Christ for us, we have freedom from our sins. God, the penalty has been paid. The consequences sometimes have to be dealt with. But our God, today, in the name of Jesus, we ask your blessing upon the bread and the cup and as we partake may our hearts be reminded of the great sacrifice of Christ on Calvary this I pray in Christ's name amen as Jesus had taken the bread and blessed it then he broke it you'll find the bread in the bottom part of your two part cup here he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you do this, remember me. You can partake. And in the same manner, Jesus raised the cup. I can't help but think it was just a plain, ordinary cup. Not a golden chalice. Not a jeweled cup, just a plain, ordinary cup. And what he said was, as often as you drink this, 
do so in remembrance of me. But he added an addendum to that. And I will not drink it again with you until I drink it in the kingdom. Every day my prayer is thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come on earth. I like to pray in earth because I am earth. As it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come. You may pray. The celebration of the union is just that. So many people look at it as a maudlin and sad occasion. We ought to be jumping the pews and running the aisles and shouting and hollering because Jesus has paid a great price for us. His blood for me and you. So precious. When I think of what we get to do in just a few minutes, I'll share my thought when we get there. Let's sing the last verse. awesome thing for family. I would like whoever's presenting a baby to bring that little child up here, please. Now, I understand we have a slew of godparents. So y'all just stand up and tell us who you are, okay? Can you do that for me? Everybody that's a godparent, stand up. She can stand up if she wants to. (laughs) Praise the Lord. We thank you for being sponsors here today, okay? So you can sit down, and I thank you so much. For being a part of this. I want you to hear the words of our Lord, okay? All authority in heaven and earth is given unto me. Go ye therefore and make of all nations disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always even unto the ends of the earth. Hillary Rodham Clinton made a statement one time, says it takes a village to raise a child. I disagree with her greatly, not because of political things, but because it not only takes a village, it takes a church and it takes a family to raise a child. You should be grateful to see all these folks here with you because you know why? They're family and they will assist you But I understand you've become a very good mother. Look at that smile. Isn't that precious? I'm going to tickle. No, I won't tickle his feet. It's expedient that the church family understands that they are vital to this child also. 
Whether you realize it or not, your influence on any child who attends this church is important, as it will be with Javon, whom we are dedicating to the Lord today. Hmm? JV on? How am I supposed to say that? JV on. I got it right. Okay. JV on. Hey, believe me, I, I speak American, not English. And I have a hard time sometimes with that. So praise God. And how do we pronounce your name, sir? Tariq. Tariq. Yes, sir. Oh, I, that, I'll forget that in two minutes. The psalmist David said this. One generation shall praise thy works, and another generation shall declare it his mighty acts. The scripture, the scriptural basis for which we do this today comes from the story we find in Luke chapter 2. In Luke 2.22 we read, where Mary, the mother of Jesus, along with her husband Joseph, presented the baby Jesus. Jesus went through this to the priest in the temple when he was eight days old. Proverbs 22, 6, remember this, okay? Admonishes us to train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not vary from it. We must engage in training our children. If we don't, someone else will. I want you guys to be responsible training the child, okay? Who presents this baby to receive baptism today? We do. Okay. And all these people out here? Okay. Do you desire that Javion, Kevin, Jones, I got it right, be baptized into the Christian faith? Relying on God's grace, do you promise to walk in the way of Christ and teach the way to your child? Javion Kevin Jones, we dedicate you to the Lord <laughs> and praise God for you. And I will not do that again. But we certainly ask God to put his angels around you, his spirit within you. And when you reach the age that you can make your own decision, that you will decide for Christ above all things. Father, I pray for this baby, this mom and dad, so much today this world we pray your hand upon them in Jesus name now to you all y'all I want you to hear as members of the family extended family and the church family I ask you to faithfully promise that you will live a life before this child that will exemplify Christ and will be the responsible reason that ch the child accepts Christ as his Savior. We pray these things that Christ be glorified. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Now, what I have here for you is a certificate. I will need you at the end of the service to sign here, and I'll have all the godparents sign here, okay? This is yours, and this is yours. Dad, I'll give that to you. Would you all give them a round of we love you, praise? You can go sit down. Thank you. Praise the Lord.
<clears throat> I want to share just a thought with y'all. I don't know if you know the song, Because He Lives, by Bill and Gloria Gaither. I can face tomorrow because he lives, all fear is gone. I don't know if you ever heard the story, but they wrote that during the 60s. 60s was a real turbulent years. I know I lived through it. The key word is through it. But their question prior to writing that song was this. Why would we want to bring a baby into this world? And there is, you know the reason? is because Jesus Christ lives. You understand? We can face tomorrow because Jesus Christ lives. No matter how bad it gets, no matter how deep the valley or rough the road, when it gets like that, you look to Jesus. And I make this promise to you that he will lead you through. You don't believe me, read the 23rd Psalm. Well, praise the Lord. We have a scripture reading for today, which I'm, I was never one to ever worry about time, but since we began to do live stuff, you think about it. Matthew chapter 16. Verses 13 through 19. Listen carefully to what it says. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say I am? Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied and said, John the Baptist. Others say you're Elijah. And still others think you're Jeremiah, one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked. What do you, who do you say I am? Simon Peter, you know him. He's that impetuous guy. Simon Peter bolted out, and he says, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus replied to him and said, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock will I build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. You know, one of the things that I believe is that we have today the blessing of thou art the Christ, the son of the living God in our service today. Would you stand with me as we sing our opening hymn, O God, our help in ages past, page 78 in your hymn book. I cheated, I copied and put it on a sheet. I don't have to play with a hymn book. Please be seated. Are there any prayer requests here today? Anything that you would like for me to pray for? Anyone? Okay. If you have a prayer request and would like to write it down, please do so and put it in our prayer box. It'll be prayed about, about today and it'll be prayed for all week long. It will go out to our prayer network, so don't put any names in it. But uh, 
we, we are grateful that you are here with us. Let's take a moment and pray. Father, as we gather together here today, I thank you for the opportunity to serve you, to praise your name, to worship you, and God, to be a part of this wonderful service that we just saw. Father, as we lay our hands on children, God, it is an awesome responsibility. I cannot even begin to think what I would be like if I were having to raise children in this day and age. But our God, I do thank you that the power of your Holy Spirit will be with Tariq and Brogan, that you'll guide them, that you'll protect them, that you'll watch over them, and that this baby will grow in the nurture and the stature of Christ, and their home will be filled with the unity. God, may today be a day of great beginnings for them and for each of us as we renew our commitment to you. And God, as we pray together, we ask you to meet every need, every unspoken request that is here today. God, I can see it now, a crier running through heaven, calling out the unspoken requests so that we can see them answered. Father, I give you praise and glory that we can declare as believers that greater is he is in me than he is in the world. Thank you, Father, for that. We pray this in Jesus' name and all God's children said, amen. amen. We're going to sing, Greater is He that is in me. Let's give it a shot. <clears throat> I don't know, uh, I, I don't think we'll offend anyone, but could we clap to that song as we sing it one more time? Could that be okay? I mean, would you all do that with me? I mean, I know that it's kind of not the thing to do in church, right? I don't know, man, I like to do it. Let's do it again, here we go. See, the house didn't fall down, the walls didn't crumble, and we didn't all get zapped by lightning. The title of my message today, and I'm, I'm being driven nuts by this drop out of my microphone, so it's not your fault. No, it's not your fault. It happens to be the fact that uh, the FCC is changing rules, and so I've got to get a new frequency. Anyway, the title of this message is Things We Learn About Going Through Storms. How many of you like to go through storms? Oh. First of all, regular rain and thunderstorms, I don't like. But the storms of life, I like even less. Now, I don't know about you. You might like them. You might just run to them. I don't. The story of Jesus coming to his disciples walking on the water comes uh, on the heels of him feeding 5,000 people. 
Remember he fed 5,000 people with two, two loaves and five fishies? Now, let me tell you what happened. He put his disciples in a boat. He commanded them, get in this boat, and I want you to go over the other side of this, this body of water here, and when I get done here, I'll be over with you. They said, okay. They're seasoned seamen. They've been on that lake for all their lives. They fished it. They sailed it. They swam in it. They bathed in it. They did everything in the world. They knew it like the back of their hand. Put the sail up. Take off. Jesus goes and disperses the crowd. And Jesus does what Jesus does most of the time. He went to a place alone and prayed. My friends, I tell you what, that in itself is a sermon and a half. He went alone and prayed. He went to his prayer closet, actually his prayer mountain, and he began to pray. Well, he was there, and it was about three, between three and six in the morning, he decided to go back and go across the lake. Well, he starts walking across the lake. Well, he gets out there, and the waves are boisterous, and Disciples been rowing all night, been fighting the wind. The sails getting ripped apart, boats getting overflowed with water, and they're screaming, they're, they're ready to die. And all of a sudden, here comes Jesus walking on the water. Hmm? You're, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Anything you want to do is fine. They see him walking, and they supposed him to be a ghost. And Jesus said to him, fear not, for it is I. It is I is an important line for you to remember. It's the same word that means I am. I am he. So Jesus comes closer, and you know, here we go. Oh, Peter. He says, Lord, if it be you, command me to come to you. Now, you all remember the story of Lazarus when he died? Remember what Jesus did at the tomb? Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth, because had he just said, come forth, maybe all the graves in, in Jerusalem would have just emptied out. But Jesus said something really odd to Peter. He didn't say, Peter, come forth. He said, come forth. Do you know I believe every one of them disciples could have got out of that boat and walked to Jesus? But here goes old Peter. I don't think he got out arrogantly. I don't think his request was arrogant. I think he was at that point where his faith was starting to rise. And then he got out there, and it says that he heard and saw the wind was boisterous. And he began to fall, sink, drown, die. And he did the only thing that I command you all to do when you feel that way. Put that hand up and say, Lord, save me. he will. You see, I have a disclaimer to put in the front of this message. Nothing in this message today, especially in the story I just told you, nothing will be helpful to you in your walk if you're not seeking God. Jesus will allow you to go through storms. Immediately, he made his disciples get into a boat. He made his disciples get into a boat so they could get out on the water, so the water could get bad, so they could face a storm, and so that they could be able to handle the storm, but yet he was nearby. Jesus will allow you and me to go through storms. 
There's not a person in this room that hasn't been through a storm. Well, maybe one. <laughs> maybe one. But you understand, storms don't mean rain and lightning and thunder. You know what storms mean? Storms mean trials in your life. Storms mean that time when you just didn't think you could take another step and you wanted to quit. You young people probably don't know what that means. But us over the age of 30, us old people, we know what it means to want to give up. Just throw up our hands and say, okay, Lord Jesus, come get me now. I'm done. I said that at the age of 50. I thought it at the age of 60. At 70, I got a new breath of life, and at 75, I'm ready to take names, and you know what follows that, right? But I want you to know something. He gets us through the storm. He doesn't say that the storm will cease when we ask it. He gets us through it. He's the only one that can stop the storm. And from what I've experienced, he ain't stopping it anytime soon. Jesus is praying for you. What did Jesus do immediately after he got the crowd dispersed? He went to a mountain alone to pray. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 34, that he is before the throne of God, interceding for each and every one of us. You see, he's aware of what you're going through. He knows your pain. He knows your anguish. He knows your suffering. He knows your finances. He knows your anger. He knows all about you. He tries to get you through it. He will get you through it if you let him. You see, we need to be going forward in obedience, and that's always better than going backwards in disobedience. Matthew 14, 24 says this, but the boat, by the time by this time was a long way from land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. The disciples were doing everything in their power to get to the other side, and they were being held up in the middle of the, of the, of the lake. And all, all they had to do was let go, and the wind would have blown them back where they came from. Give up. Quit. Stop. We'll start all over again. You see, there's never a moment that we should ever do it, that we should ever stop. The disciples were rowing. It would have been much easier to turn around and go back. But they decided to do what disciples decide to do, to keep going forward in obedience. There was never a moment when the presence of God was far from them. Matthew 14, 25. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the wall. He came, did you, do you understand what it says? He came to them. I don't think any of them were praying, Lord Jesus, come here, come on, I need you. I think they were concentrating on trying to get to the other side. And you know what every one of us do every morning we get up? We try to get from Monday to Tuesday, Tuesday to Wednesday, Wednesday to Thursday, Thursday to Friday, Friday to Saturday, Saturday to Sunday, and then we start all over again on Monday. But you know what it would be so much easier? To take our focus from all of that and raise our sight to the horizon. I heard a term today I've never heard before called horizon driving. I don't know if anybody knows what that is or not. I had to look it up and research it. It means you're always looking ahead. You're not looking at this little section of place where you are. 
They have schools dedicated to horizon driving now, teaching you how to do it. Well, Jesus taught us how to do it. Hey, the storm's raging. Look at me. Hey, the, the problems are all over the world. Look at me. Focus on Jesus. Don't focus on your problems. You see, there's never been a moment that God isn't near to us. He waited until the time was right before he intervened. Do you know what that means? That means that all of our crying, belly aching, kicking, screaming, jumping up and down, throwing a fit, and getting mad, all of those things matter nothing because it takes the time to be right. Rogan ought to know that. The time had to be right for that baby to be born, right? You couldn't say, wait a minute. This thing, stop this. Maybe you wanted to, but understand, the timing of God is perfect. Our timing isn't. Okay. Our focus has to stay on Jesus. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, oh, it's a ghost. They called out in fear. Fear is the demon of this age. The more frightened that the devil can make you, the better off he feels. Disciples' focus was just getting through the storm. How many of you have ever felt that way? I just want to get through this. And then maybe it'll be better tomorrow. Well, if you don't get through it, tomorrow's going to be the same thing. You see, their focus was on the wrong thing. Our focus is generally on the wrong thing when we just want to get through. Our focus has to be on Jesus. We have to remember who Jesus is and allow his words to comfort us. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and say, said, <clears throat> Take heart, it is I. Do not fear. Matthew 14, 27. The words that Jesus spoke were so important. They were the same words that were spoken when Moses asked God, who shall I say sent me? You know what he said? I am. And there are seven different places in the New Testament where Jesus says, I am. I am. Important words. Psalm 34, 18 says, The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. I don't know about you, but there's times in my life when I was just totally and completely crushed. John 16, 33. I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Never allow your storm to cause you to doubt God's goodness or lose faith in God's power. Never let the storm shake your faith. It does. We allow it to because we look at the waves. We hear the wind. We see the funnel cloud coming through town. And I don't necessarily mean the physical funnel cloud. I mean the one that rages within us. Lord, if it's you, if it's you, who else would be walking on the water? Well, it was, it was Peter for a minute. Then his focus drifted. How many folks do you know start gung-ho for the Lord? I mean, on fire for Jesus. And within weeks, their focus drifts. That's because we older Christians don't do enough to help them funnel and focus. We think 
You shake hands with a preacher, you sign your name to the card, you get your membership card, you go out and everything's fine. That ain't the way we do it here. Never allow your storm to change your focus. Our storms have the potential to open our eyes to the power of God. And our storms have the potential to open others' eyes to the power of God. I, I have this critical little saying that I've developed over the years. If you fix the fix that God's fixed to fix you, he'll have to fix another fix to fix you. Did y'all catch that? In other words, if you meddle in God's business, God will take and make another situation where he has to get you straightened out again. So if you fix the fix that God fix, sent to fix you, then he'll, he'll have to fix another fix to fix you. Just something I do. Peter got to see and experience the power of Jesus as he walked in the storm. In that same way, here's the illustration that I came up with. Peter walking on the water, now he sinks. And he cries out, Lord, save me. And Jesus says, oh, ye of little faith, why did you not believe? God wanted Peter's faith to come out of him. Wanted it to grow and be seen. So I, I, I came up with this illustration. It's like a jelly donut squeezed real hard. That's what happened to Peter, and that's what happens to us. When we get in those very, very hard situations, God's squeezing us so we can see the faith that we truly have in him come out. Because if we never have to use it, we ain't going to. It's like having a, an 800 horsepower car and driving down the road, putsy putzing along and not doing anything with the horsepower. But if you do it too soon, you might get a ticket. So you gotta be careful when you use the horsepower. You gotta be careful when you use your faith. You gotta use it when God says to use it. Believe me, you don't know how many funerals I've stood at and I just wanted to walk up to that casket and say, in the name of Jesus, rise up. Would that be overstepping my bounds? You don't know how many hospital beds I've stood alongside of and prayed for them, people to be healed, and I expected them to get up off of the bed and walk out with me. That's the way I pray. It's the way I believe. Maybe God's squeezing another donut, I don't know. Well, I want to end this up this way. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 4, God says that God confronts us and comforts us in our afflictions so that we may be able to comfort those who are in afflictions also. That they can receive from God the same comfort we receive. So we don't have time to wallow in self-pity today or walk in disobedience. As our weaknesses are exposed, we must learn, lean on the strength of the object of our faith. So let me ask you this question. What is the object of your faith? Let's pray. Father, I want to ask your Holy Spirit to move upon each one today. Our God, that we would know the object of our faith. That we know, that we know, that we know Jesus Christ 
is Lord. Not just of all, but of our lives. So with that, Father, I ask you to move upon this congregation in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen. Would you stand with me as we sing our closing hymn, 445? First and last verse. Our Father, I ask you today that by the presence of your Holy Spirit, not one person would leave this building without the assurance of Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Our God, I pray today that by the power of Christ, his shed blood, and the overwhelming presence of your spirit. You would go with us as we go to our homes. Protect us. Watch over us. But above all, Father, redeem us by the blood of the Lamb. For it's in Christ's name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. You're dismissed.